Hi, so in this video, we're gonna take a first impressions look at Microsoft Context IQ in Microsoft Editor and Microsoft Teams. We've got new videos on Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Teams coming out every Tuesday. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified every time a new video comes out. I'm Gavin Jones, founder of MeTime, where we help save people time at work to do more of the things they love. Former transformation manager for a Fortune 500 company. And if your organization needs help saving meaningful hours per person per week, free up time for customers, friends, family, well-being and engagement, then stick around until the end to find out some more details about how we might be able to work together. But for right now, let's go and have a first impressions look at Microsoft Context IQ. I thought it was a bit strange at first that Microsoft had come up with another term that seems to go across apps. So like Viva seems to be a complete bundling of disparate apps across the employee experience sphere. Context IQ seems like it should just be, you know, not even called the thing. It's come out of Microsoft Ignite, they need to badge it up, it's going across Microsoft Editor, it's going across Microsoft Teams, it's going across OneDrive, SharePoint, Dynamics, it also feeds into some of the functionality they showed as Microsoft Loop. So it's a sort of a amorphous term that doesn't really seem to land on anything what it is, but the, the technology is pretty cool. Let's go and have a quick look at it. So it's AI experiences across Microsoft 365 that predict, seek and suggest information people need, right? in the flow of their work, which sounds like it's very needed. So the first thing they say is gonna change is Microsoft Editor. If you don't know what Microsoft Editor is, it's a plugin you can get for Word, Outlook at the moment. Bizarrely, they've got some Context IQ things coming to Teams, but they haven't specifically mentioned that Editor is coming to Teams, which I think would be very needed because the amount of spelling mistakes I make, at least in Teams, is quite embarrassing. Unless you've got it in a browser, we can get Editor in your browser, and then Editor works when you type in a Teams chat, but in the Teams desktop app, you can't get Editor at the time of recording, and I'm not sure that this announcement specifically says the editor is coming into Teams, but that would be great if it is. So it's sort of scanning as you type. So a bit like Gmail has done for ages, it's suggesting things, words that you want, might wanna put in, files, app mentions, as you're typing in your email. And this is coming to Outlook web app first, as most things seems to be doing right now. I'm not sure many people use Outlook Web App, but it seems like all the developments come to Microsoft Web App first, because I guess that's easiest for them to develop. But hopefully this will be coming to Outlook desktop app soon. Also, if you work with me, I suggest not using email for anything internal anyway. So if you're sharing a file, I wouldn't be putting it on email, but obviously let's go through the text. So when you need to attach, insert, or share a file with colleagues, editor's gonna suggest relevant file or document based on similar subjects well, because you've created or worked on them before. When tagging colleagues in a file using the at symbol, in a commenter email, editor recommends potential people to tag based on colleagues you currently work with or stakeholders you've previously tagged for document reviews. So basically just a list of recently used people is gonna pop up. But if you start typing their name, then they're gonna pop up anyway. So probably it's not gonna be a hugely useful. And if you do, I mentioned them like in this little video, it's gonna put them in the CC. So I think it already does that for you right now anyway. Having the doc sort of in line uh, is new. And I'm hoping that that's gonna be a cloud document and not a hard attachment into the email because that would be sort of going backwards in terms of functionality. When you try and schedule a meeting in Outlook email, an editor is gonna recognize that you wanna schedule a meeting and pop up some availability there that's got the times that everyone can make, so save you switching. But in this example, you're still asking the person, let's meet this Thursday. It's not actually putting the meeting in for you, so it's sort of not hugely useful in terms of like the fine time app, which I haven't done a video on, but that is really useful because then it's like, this is the times I'm available. Let's see what time's best for you. And then it automatically then schedules the meeting for you. This, although it's cool, because it's doing all the hard effort of seeing when people are available and suggesting some times, doesn't seem like it's actually gonna book that meeting in for you. It's just suggesting that that's the text you wanna write in the email. I could be wrong, because this uh, is not out yet. So be good if that can change. And then when you're collaborating on a sales opportunity, you need to put in dynamics data, Editor is gonna suggest related Dynamics 365 information as a loop component, allowing you to update and take action of it in the flow of work. So this is in Teams, and it looks like there's an editor button at the bottom of Teams, but obviously this is working without needing to click that editor button. It's just when you type at, 
it's popping up some Microsoft Dynamics information for you. But we're interested to see what that editor button does, because like I said, having editor in Teams just to do your spelling and grammar would be great. And then lastly, it says when entering data or object as you write, editors suggest information such as frequent fly number when booking a flight online or sales message when collaborating in Teams. So not really sure what that is, just seems like a bit of autocomplete, a bit like what you get in Safari on a Mac or your iPad when it fills in your credit card details. I'm not really sure that bit. Interesting, there's a big bit about digging for files ranked to the number one barrier to hybrid work because of interruptions. And it's saying Context IQ is gonna bring the content you need to your fingertips so you can complete tasks faster and stay in your flow, which would be great. And hopefully it's just gonna show up and we won't need to talk about it much. But obviously it is getting quite confusing about the slashes the loop components and the stuff that I talked about in this video, whether it's completing files or app mentions or components, the AI is gonna to need to be pretty good to then figure out, do I want a component? Do I want a person? Do I want a file? What do I want to put in? So hopefully that's gonna get all sorted because the slashes, ads are gonna get a bit more confusing for normal people doing normal jobs, I would suggest. Interestingly, if you follow our advice about how to set up your team structure and your file structure all together for your entire organization, and think about all of that up front, then that will stop you digging around for files without using AI because everyone will know exactly where to go for everything they need to do their job and how to interact with every other person as part of a cultural change that we do in our consulting programs. If you wanna find out more about those, then click one of the links in the description below. So we've got some Teams training decks for free, we've got some free webinars you can find out a bit more. If you're in the food and beverage industry, manufacturers to uh, retail or fast moving consumer goods, then let's connect on LinkedIn because I've got some free interactive workshops we can find out a bit more and we can dig into a, a bit deeper for senior leaders in those organizations where we help people save meaningful hours per person per week at work and free them up to spend more time with customers or more time for well-being and engagement. If you just want to find out more about Microsoft 365, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified every time a new video comes out. If you like this video, please don't leave before clicking the thumbs up. It really helps us in the YouTube algorithm. And if you really like the video, consider buying me a beer using a link in the description below. It really does help support the channel and keep free content coming out on YouTube. But thanks for watching so far, and we'll see you in the next video.